Welcome to the Superbase Crash Course for .NET developers. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the Superbase platform and I'm going to highlight some of the key features that Superbase has to offer. Then we're going to build an API completely from scratch using the Superbase C-Sharp client. And lastly, I want to say a big thank you to Superbase for sponsoring this video. I was already a big fan and I was really excited when they reached out to me and agreed to sponsor this video. If you want to learn more about Superbase, you can check out the links in the description below. And now let's see what we can build with Superbase. Superbase is a cloud platform and it's an open source Firebase alternative. You can create a Superbase project and get access to a Postgres database, authentication, a storage account, edge functions, which are just a serverless concept like Azure functions, and you also get access to real-time subscriptions, allowing you to build real-time applications. If you take a look at the product tab, you can see the key features that I just mentioned. And let's do a brief overview of each one of these features. So the first feature is a database. You get access to a dedicated PostgreSQL database in the cloud that you can use to build your backend. You also get access to built-in authentication with support for the most popular social login providers. Then you have a storage feature. It allows you to store any kind of file or blob in the cloud, and it's also incredibly fast. Then you have support for real-time subscriptions. You can listen to database changes in real time in your backend and react to them accordingly. And you also have support for the publish subscribe pattern using channels. And lastly, you have the edge functions feature. Edge functions allow you to deploy your code in a serverless environment and they are very practical for implementing webhooks. Also, Superbase comes with a very generous free plan so that you can easily try it out. In the free plan, you get access to 500 megabytes of storage for your database and one gigabyte of file storage. You also have support for 50,000 monthly active users with Superbase authentication. The free plan is more than enough to get started with simple projects and if you need something more, you can always upgrade to the pro plan, which is very affordable in my opinion. So let me show you how to get started with Superbase. I'm going to log in using my GitHub account, and then I'm going to show you how to create a new project. If you don't have any projects, you can go ahead and create a new one. So let's go ahead and do that. We first need to give our project a name. I'm going to call the project newsletter API because that's what I'm going to be building in the backend. For the password, you can either create your own or ask Superbase to generate a strong password for you. Make sure to copy the password and store it somewhere safely if you're going to use the generated one. For the region, I suggest you choose something that is closest to you. For me, because I'm in Serbia, that's going to be Germany. So I'm going to pick Central EU Frankfurt for the region and I'm going to remain on the free plan and let's create this project. Our Superbase project was successfully created and you can access the table editor from the side menu to see the tables that you have in your database. We currently don't have any tables, so let's go ahead and create one. I want to create a table for storing my newsletters, so I'm going to give it a name of newsletters, and then you can configure role level security and support for real time subscriptions for this table. I'm going to temporarily disable role level security just to make it easier when it's time to build the API. Here you can define the columns that you want to have in your table. So for the newsletter, I want to add a few more things. I want to add a newsletter name and I can give it the name in the name column and then I need to choose which data type I'm going to use for this column. You have access to many different types supported in Postgres. What I'm looking for is either varchar or text. I'm going to choose varchar. I also want to add a column that is going to represent the read time. For the read time column, I want to use a simple integer and in C-sharp, the integer type has four bytes. So that's what I'm going to use for the read time column. And let's also add one more column for the description of the newsletter. And this is going to be a text column. So I'm going to choose the text data type. You can also reorder the columns however you want to. I'm going to, for example, move the created that column to the bottom and make 
name and description next to each other. I already had an ID column, which is configured as a primary key, and I'm pretty happy with this, so let's create the newsletters table. So now our newsletters table is created, and we can directly insert rows into the table through the user interface. So let's give it a name of MNW, and the next issue is going to be number 30, so that's the one I'm going to use. I'm going to add a short description here, and let's say the read time is 4 minutes. I'm going to leave the ID and created that columns empty, and the database is going to fill them in automatically. So I'm going to click Save. You can see our newsletter is created in the table, and now I'm going to show you how to create an API using the Superbase C-Sharp client. The Supabase C-Sharp client is open source and you can find it on GitHub and it has integrations with all of the Supabase features and the one we're going to be using is the integration with the PostgreSQL database. I also want to mention the amazing documentation for the Supabase C-Sharp client library. It contains everything you may want to get started with using the library I think Superbase did a really good job with the documentation as it's one of the best that I've seen for any library that I worked with. Now we're going to build an API using the Superbase client library and let's get started by installing the actual library. I'm going to look for the Superbase C Sharp NuGet package and this is the one that you want to install. So let's go ahead and add it to our project. Now the first thing that we need to do is to configure the Superbase client. To configure the Superbase client, we're going to need the project URL and the public key for your Superbase project. You can find these details in the project settings under the API tab, and I'm going to use the project URL and the public key here to authenticate with the Superbase client. So let's go ahead and configure the Superbase client as a scoped service so I'm going to say builder services at scoped and I'm going to configure the Supabase client class as a scoped service. I'm just going to return a new instance of the Supabase client. So I'm going to say new Supabase.client and we're going to provide the project URL, the project key and some Supabase options to create a new instance. I'm going to pull the project URL and key from our application settings. So I'm going to say builder configuration and let's access the Supabase URL and let's also access the Supabase key. So this is going to be Supabase key and we can also create a new instance of the Supabase options class where we can configure a few properties. For example, the auto refresh token and the auto connect real time. Let's set these properties to true. And this completes our configuration for the Superbase client. And now we can use it inside of our API. The next thing we're going to need is a model for our newsletter table. So let's go ahead and create a models folder. And I'm going to add a class representing our newsletter. So let's create the newsletter class. To use this class with the Superbase client library, it needs to inherit from the base model class and now I can add the properties that represent the columns in my database. So we have a long property for the ID and we also had a name and description properties. So let's go ahead and add them. Then we had an integer property for the read time. So let's go ahead and create the read time property. And lastly, we had a daytime property for the created at. So we're going to use daytime created at and let's add the getter and setter. So this is our newsletter model and we need to decorate it with some attributes to configure it further. The first attribute that we're going to add is on the class itself. We're going to use the table attribute and the table in our database is called newsletter. Then we're going to decorate the ID with the primary key attribute and the column name is going to be ID and should insert is going to be set to false because this is going to be auto-generated. And let's configure the rest of our columns using the column attribute. So this is going to be name. Then we have the column attribute again. And this is going to be description. Then we have the column attribute one more time. This is going to be read time with snake case. And lastly, we have column for our created at attribute. So let's give it the created at column name. 
let's also create the request and response objects that we're going to expose from our API. I'm going to add a contracts folder and we're going to create a create newsletter request. So this is going to be the model that we're going to use when we're creating the newsletter. It's going to have just a few properties which are going to be the name, description, and read time. So let's go ahead and add them. So name with a public getter and setter. Then we're going to need the property for description. So let's go ahead and add that. And we're also going to need one more property for the read time, which is going to be an integer. So we're going to use this to expose it from our API. And let's also create a newsletter response class that we're going to use for returning the newsletter from our API. So this is going to be newsletter response. And I'm going to additionally add the ID field as another property. And we're also going to add the created at date and time. So this is going to be date time and we're going to call it created at. And let's just move this into its own file. So let's see how we're going to use this to build our API where we're going to be creating newsletters in our database. I want to make just a quick interjection here and introduce you to Postgres. Postgres is a web server that turns your PostgreSQL database into a RESTful API. If you are using Supabase, you already have access to a Postgres server which exposes a RESTful API with CRUD endpoints for your database. The endpoints that we are going to build are already available with Postgres and you won't have to create them from scratch in a real project but if you want to introduce additional business logic with your CRUD operations, then this is the route that you're going to have to take. So let's get back to the code and see how we can build our API. Let's go ahead and create the minimal API endpoints for CRUD operations on the newsletter entity. I'm going to start off by creating a post endpoint for creating a newsletter by calling map post. We're going to give it a route of newsletters and we're going to make it asynchronous. In the request body, we are going to accept the create newsletter request object. Let's give it a name of request. And we're also going to accept the Supabase client instance. Let's give it a name of client. And let's define our actual minimal API endpoint body. So what we're going to do inside is we're going to create a new newsletter instance. We're going to say new newsletter. This is going to be our entity. We're going to set the property values based on the create newsletter request. So let's populate the name from request name and let's do the same for description and for the read time property. We're going to leave out the ID and created that columns because they're going to be populated in the database. So how are we now going to insert the newsletter object into the Supabase database? We're going to use our Supabase client which exposes asynchronous methods and first we need to call the from function and specify which entity we are working with and this is the newsletter entity and then we have access to the insert method where we can pass our newsletter object so let's pass our newsletter this is going to persist the newsletter object in the database if you want to get back the id of the newly created object you're going to have to access the response from the insert method the model response is going to contain a collection of newsletters and we're going to access the first one which is going to be our new newsletter so let's give it an according name for the variable and we can for example return the id of this newsletter by calling results dot okay and let's specify the new newsletter id let's also create a get endpoint for fetching the newsletter by the id so i'm going to say map get the route is going to be newsletters, same as above, and we're going to accept an ID from the route. Let's scroll this a little bit down. So it's going to be asynchronous. We're going to accept a long ID, and we also need the Supabase client to execute our query. So I'm going to say supabase.client, and I'm going to give it the name of client. And now let's define the body for our minimal API endpoint. So to get the newsletter, you're going to use the Supabase client and you can say from newsletter, the Supabase client has support for link queries. So I can define a condition to check that the newsletter ID is equal to the ID that is specified in the route. And then we can call get to get back a model response. 
let's store this in a variable so I'm going to call it response and to get access to the newsletter that we fetch we can say response models and let's say first or default if the newsletter that we tried to fetch is null then we're going to return a 404 not found response so let's do that return results dot not found otherwise we're going to return a new newsletter response from our api so i'm going to say new newsletter response and let's set the appropriate values on the properties so the id is going to come from newsletter id and then the same we're going to apply for the name for the description the read time and the created that so description the next is going to be read time and let's also set the created at from the newsletter that we fetched from our superbase database and now we can return this from our api endpoint by calling return results dot okay and let's return our newsletter response let's also quickly add an endpoint for deleting a product by the id so i'm going to add one more endpoint i'm going to call it map delete and let's give it a route of newsletters with the id in the route and it's going to have the same signature as the get endpoint so long id and we're going to accept the superbase client let's see how we could delete an endpoint by an id deleting a record with the superbase client is very simple you just call the client and you specify what you want to delete in our case this is going to be the newsletter then you add a where statement to select the newsletter with the specified id so we say that the id is equal to the one that is coming from the route and then we just call the delete method to delete this record and we can return a uh, results no content from this endpoint so results no content and let's give our api a try let's try out our api endpoints from postman so first i'm going to create a newsletter by hitting our post endpoint and you can see we get back the id of the new newsletter inserted into our database now i'm going to use this id in the get endpoint and when i hit it we're going to get back the newsletter response you can see we populated all of the properties on the newsletter and now if i try to delete the newsletter with the id of six it should be deleted in the database and now if i hit the get endpoint again I expect to see a 404 not found which is indeed the case and we have successfully deleted our newsletter from the database so that's it for the api implementation using the superbase c sharp client i found it very easy to work with and it offers a similar experience as ef core for example if you want to learn more i invite you to check out the superbase docs i think they are very well written and contain a lot of information to get you started with using Superbase. Let me know in the comments what you think about Superbase. Subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one and until next time, stay awesome.